Uh, his oeuvre of work covers everything from architecture to product to industry to food. He is an avid naturalist and a birder. Please let me welcome Andre J. Phantom. Good evening, everyone. And a small confession before I start. It's actually well past my bedtime. But I will still try and keep this to 15 minutes. Uh, Somehow or the other. Yeah. OK, so these are a couple of books that we've done. But I'm going to go pretty fast to the whole uh, presentation. And if someone has questions, and once talk's over, we can talk about it. But 15 minutes is my aim, and the clock is already ticking. So let's uh, keep it rolling. So here's a, a few samples of the work that we do. This is quite awkward. <laughs> There's one more. And yeah, you can go to the next slide. So the most good looking guy in that photograph is me, uh, right there with the red sweater. I grew up in this tiny village in eastern Bhutan called Kanglung. And uh, that's where this whole relationship with architecture started, although I was quite unaware of it uh, for a long time. Uh, in the next slide, um, so this tiny village was actually home to the uh, country's first college. And as a result, growing up, uh, I was able to see all these buildings come up in this place. Our home was right in the epicenter down there, a small little cottage. And all these buildings sort of sprung up around us. So as a child, I spent a lot of time uh, watching JCBs and road rollers and what have you at work and completely fell in love with them. I mean, kids have ambitions. Mine was to be a dumper driver. So. <laughs> See, that's my nephew, as you can see, playing with his JCBs. I used to just, you know, sit and in awe, watch these JCBs and road rollers at work. You can go to the next slide. The first time I really heard of architecture was when my brother called back from SEPT to say that he had uh, got onto the waiting list or something. Uh, anybody from SEPT here? No. Okay. And then he later joined SPA, and that's where I really came in touch with architecture for the first time as I used to you know, escape uh, college and go to Maharani Bagh and watch these guys build these models and stuff. But it stopped out there. Uh, I picked up photography in college and began with this small little Zenith camera. And for those of you who use uh, cameras, you'll know, uh, the camera didn't even have a light meter. And somehow or the other, I started taking photographs. All these photographs were taken on this little camera. And I just got sucked into photography. Architecture photography, when it did happen, was this single photograph. And even this photograph happened in quite an odd way. We'd gone on a walk into the ridge. I had two frames left in my camera at the end of the day. And I couldn't waste it. It was really very expensive. Uh, film was very expensive in those days. I still remember 36 rupees for a roll of Nova that I used to shoot on. And sitting where I was, in order not to waste those two frames, uh, I found a frame and I just I took this photograph and forgot about it. It was only much later at a photography competition. I had no other entry. I put this one in and luckily I won. Then too, architecture photography was just that one competition and I never looked at it at anything more. After college, I spent a lot of time traveling around the world. I had a fantastic job and you can go through these few slides quite quickly, yeah. and down. So I got to see the carving of a glacier up in Alaska. And for those of you who are wondering about the scale out here, that's about the height of a 30-story building. So I was fortunate enough to see that. I was also fortunate enough to travel all around Americas, Europe. I learned that fish could fly. Never thought that I'd ever see one, but that's a flying fish down in Brazil. And when fish fly, then other flying objects, you know, chase them and sometimes even eat them. Anyway. <laughs> so, so this is what I did for a while. And then uh, I came back to India and started uh, working out, out here. And this, uh, this, is, this is the type of work we were, uh, we've been doing. Uh, the next few slides, I'm going to talk about a few projects that are photographed. And just a couple of photographs to tell you uh, you know, how I look at uh, photography and how I look at architecture. And uh, so we'll start off with a project I think is very familiar to all of you. 
Ras, I think Amrish has presented uh, Ras before. So when we, when we go out to shoot, a lot of photography happens even before we reach the site. Uh, we spend a lot of time trying to understand what uh, the architect and the clients have been up to. And out here, Amrish and Nikhil both explained to me how they wanted this uh, oasis of luxury, Ras, to sort of blend in with the city. And that's what we try to do uh, through the photographs. As you can see out here at your breakfast table, how the Ras sort of blends in with the Merangar fort uh, up at the back up there. Sometimes what happens when we take photographs is we take photographs like this, which are studies, and we sort of figure out what we want to do. One story that uh, kept on coming up in Ras, and it was a big challenge actually, was that uh, there were these two uh, palettes that were being used, this blue that you can see in the background and the stone. And uh, when you took one, you couldn't take the other because the block that had the blue was right in front. And if you shot that, then you never saw anything in the background. So we took this study where we were sort of bringing in the blue through the balcony, framing it, showing that it's part of the building. And then in the background, we were able to show the lawn and then go on into the, you know, into the city. And then finally up, uh, you have the Merangar Fort. And then a couple of days later, next slide we were able to take this photograph uh, where the balcony sort of frames and the sun's in the right position and everything sort of works out uh, the way I had imagined it. Uh, just one thing, this photograph uh, of the lawn again in the evening. When we go out to shoot, uh, one thing apart from all the discussions with the architect, we spend a lot of time choosing dates. And for those of you who shoot with me, you'll often hear me saying, no, no, not right now. The weather's not right. It's the wrong time of the year, and this and that. This is a very good example, and the focus that I want you to put your eyes on is the moon. And this wasn't by chance or anything. In the next slide, you'll see our shoot dates for us. We planned it all around a full moon. So that's the type of thinking that we put in when we, when we go out to photograph. And um, the next project, of course, is one that I have to brag about. Not everybody gets their books released by the president and the prime minister. So anyway, this was a project that uh, we were uh, commissioned by the Rashtrapati Bhavan for. Out here, the building that I want to talk about, and one of the re main reasons why I love to shoot architecture, and what excites me, OK, it worked this time, OK, is the IIAS in Shimla. I mean, it's a lovely building aesthetically. I mean, it, it's beautiful. But what really gets me going with architecture I'll show you in the next uh, slides. So you see this lovely tower up there at the background, right? And it's not a lookout tower or anything. It's actually part of the engineering and the, and the architecture of the very building. So those two windows that you see right at the top of the tower, one of them is for a fire hydrant system, and the other is portable water. So this building actually has a complete fire hydrant system based on gravity. You know, no pumps, nothing. We've got all these tanks up there in the tower and fire hydrants that are made out of wax. And this type of engineering or thinking or design, however, whatever term you want to use, this is what excites me. And this is why I really love shooting buildings. I, I, I spend hours and hours, even before we pick up the camera, just trying to look for things like this. Because this is, this is what gets me going. Here's another photograph. That ceiling that you see, that evenly lit ceiling, is again another marvel of design. It's in Shimla where you have a lot of rain, so you can't have you know, open ceilings, uh, open roofs out there. That brown roof you see is actually above this lovely lighting. And the way the thing works is like this. You've got these huge 14-foot windows on the side. The inside of the ceiling is painted with white. And when you architects give me opportunity to shoot things like this, that's when I really get excited. and, and then, I don't think anybody else gives me the opportunity to capture or document stuff like this. And that's why, I mean, I'm always stuck with architecture and with you architects. <laughs> Here, I just want to sort of tell you now about the way we are looking at the work we do. For too long now, we've been documenting complete buildings. And uh, in your favor, I must say, that they don't quite convey you know, the journey and the effort and what has gone into making of these buildings. 
And more and more, we've, we've been doing these projects where we are actually documenting that entire journey. For us as photographers, it's very, very exciting. I mean, to go back and you know, relive the JCB days and the road roller days. Uh, some of us don't grow up. And uh, so this is the type of work we are doing now where we are actually capturing the entire journey of these uh, buildings. Uh, stuff like this uh, structure on the left where it's, uh, sort of designed in Lucknow, it just drives me crazy. I mean, just looking at something like that and imagining how our buildings being balanced, this is what, this is what excites me. Uh, you can go through these slides quickly again. A complete golf course in Gurgaon. Seeing it complete doesn't really tell you the story. When you watch how that flat piece of land suddenly turns into these deep lakes and huge mounds, it's only then that you can really appreciate the efforts and the design that have gone into creating something. This is a project I think uh, you all have seen. It's been published quite a few times uh, in Noida, this Katha factory that uh, Arkham, Saurabh and Arkham sort of transformed into this design school. We documented the whole process because it took them, what, I think, under 100 days to do this uh, entire turnover. And um, through the photographs uh, that are still even up there, we are able to see how these spaces that were absolutely hostile. I mean, even standing there and photographing them was a pain. I mean, let's, let's not get, I mean, the foul smell, the chemicals, all of that. But then when you go on to see what was created later, next slide. One is really able to appreciate, you know, the effort that you architects put in into creating. And for us as photographers, that journey, that narrative, that story, that's, that's really, really exciting. I had to put in a couple of behind the scenes. I was asking around, you know, what I, what I should do. So that's the type of stuff we do. You can see I'm still in love with the JCB for good reason. <laughs> and often I suspended in things like a crane so we can take our photographs. And then we have different shapes and forms of tripods, um, sometimes <laughs> very precariously positioned in different places. And even our clients sometimes end up holding the ladder for us while we are shooting. But it's good fun. <laughs> I also risk my life to take photographs, yeah? I mean, you can see that beehive right above my head, and we had to wait for, for an hour for the sun to be in the right position before we could take a photograph, but we do anything to get our photographs, as you can see. And then there are times that I forget, you know, my last name is Phantom and not Batman, and <laughs> we have one or two of these images also. Okay, I don't know what went wrong there. Okay, that's... There is a slide that should be there, which is not there. Hmm, interesting. That's quite sad. Anyway, uh, my love for architecture, uh, which I was talking about right in the beginning, uh, sort of brought us to this point where in conversations with Tanya, a good friend of mine, we decided to start uh, Spotlight which you should have seen on the screen out here, which is a sort of a photography uh, a competition for architects, where, that's still not it, but anyway, a competition for architects where we are looking for young architects with small firms who may not be able to afford our services and uh, give them an opportunity where we can document their work and get their work out there. And that slide that was missing was supposed to share that with you. Anyway, I have kept to my 15 minutes and I hope you all enjoyed the work, and thank you all very much.